Let's go! Hello, dog fans. Welcome back to Real Dog Radio. I'm Tyson Allenbaugh. With me is my co-host Mike Martin and RealDog.com's publisher, Ruth Robbins. Real Dog is part of the CBS Sports Digital and 247 Sports Network. Be sure to find us at RealDog.com. We're also on iTunes and we're even on SoundCloud. Download and share it with all your Husky friends and family. We are now to our Husky legend portion of our show. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. In 2012, he was inducted into the Husky Hall of Fame. He played for the Dogs from 1989 to 1992, I'm sorry to date you, where he was a first-team All-American, Buckus Award finalist, a national champion, three-time conference champion, two-time All-10, Pac-10 player, rather, Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, and team captain in 1992 for Coach Don James. It's the one, the only, Dave the Hammer Hoffman. Dave, welcome to Real Dog Radio. Hey, thanks. Honored to be here. Appreciate it. Oh, we're very excited for you to be here. And I left out one sort of important part of your biography, The Secret Service. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, I, I, I've been doing it for a long time, and, and I've met a lot of great people and traveled to some very interesting places and done some really interesting things. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for it. I've learned a lot over the years. And, you know, I when I finished playing, um, I didn't stick around the, the league as long as I would have liked to, of course, uh, due to injuries and other issues. And, and I um, just still had that team um, kind of physical activity, um, you know, strategizing mindset. Mm-hmm. And so it was just kind of a natural fit. And uh, it, it, it's been a great experience. And so I've only got a couple of years left, most likely, and then I'm going to retire and I'll have to go, obviously, get another job into the private sector. But, um, it, but it's been a great ride. I've been real honored to serve and uh, met some great people. Amazing, amazing stuff. And, and we already have a fan question for you from Brad in Seattle. <laughs> I'm laughing while I say this, so bear with me. Are, are, yeah. drinks, and, are drinks and movies on Air Force One free? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a great question. And uh, you know what? For the most part, yes, everything everything's covered there. So you're good to go. <laughs> I'm in the wrong line of business here. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's, that, that's a well-thought-out question. Awesome, awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go. Let's go in the time machine. We're gonna go back uh, all the way to the early '90s. If not for the US- UCLA game and uh, perhaps Greg Lewis's knee injury, you guys would have had a great shot at winning that national championship in 1990. Uh, did you or the team have a personal? Did you and the team rather have that personal goal of winning a national championship heading into the spring uh, in 1991? You know what? I think I think there was nothing else on our mind to be real honest with you. And I, I just kind of describe it as is the fact that we we uh, you know at least defensively, I can tell you we were going to go on a rampage and we were not going to stop until yeah. until we were at the top of the mountain. And and that was all that was always going to happen. And we knew we had the guys for it. And we knew we were so close the year before. And uh, and I'll tell you, you know, in a way, we learned a lot of lessons from that from that loss. You know what I mean? And so we never. You know, the next year, um, we actually had a ladder in our team room, and we would put all, all the name of our next opponent on the next rung, and that was all we would look to. And and it didn't matter who it was; it could be USC, it could be it could be Toledo or Nebraska. It didn't matter. We we're going to destroy them, and and then and then and then think ahead. We never thought ahead, even to the even to the Sunday past our Saturday, and we just took care of business. And it was it was a real honor to be a part of that crew. Amazing. Well, from one knee injury to another one, Mark Brunel goes down in that spring of 1991. How how does that how did that affect your mindset on the defense? And you know, did, did you think you had did you have more pressure to try to win games, or did you were you that confident in uh, backup Billy Joe Hobart and that the offense was in fact the real deal? Well, I'll tell you what, what made me feel. Um, oh, it, you know, first of all, it was more of a personal issue. Mark was such a good, a good buddy, and and is a good friend, and so I think something like that happens to somebody like that. It's like a brother, and really, it 
kind of jacks you up a little bit. But um, not not to overdo it, but I'll just tell you, um, the reason we weren't worried is because of our defense. And um, we used to talk about it on Friday nights. If, if we have to score once or twice, we'll go out and score once or twice because we had no idea what was going to happen on the other side. And um, it was it, it, it was that level of confidence that uh, we're going to take care of business uh, no matter who was out there. And you know, Billy did great. God bless him. But we were we were ready for uh, for anything. And um, you know, we were just lucky to kind of be stacked back then. And it just uh, when I came there in 1988 as a as a redshirt freshman, me and Edmund remember driving back to Cheney almost every away game with them, and we would talk about what in the world's happened. We're six and five, and you know, not going to a bowl game. And there was just a, a lot of guys in the class before us, in, the, in our class, of course. And then, and then when it came after, it really started to flow. And there was just a bunch of hungry guys. Not everybody was uh, all the stars and the best West or whatever the hell it was called back then. But um, it was a bunch of bad dudes. And, and honestly, that's, and that's what it was. It was guys that liked being a part of a great team, guys that liked – knocking the hell out of people and, and people that really just cared about taking care of business and paying attention in the, in the, in the classroom and the meeting room. And, uh, it was, it was great. Fantastic. Well, um, we, uh, a name that, uh, we, I was honored to, a guy I was honored to interview rather was coach Randy Hart. He was on real Doug with us a couple weeks back. Um, first off, how great is it to see him back around Husky football? I'll tell you what, that guy, he, you know what, he's, he's like that guy you just can't get enough of, honestly. You know what I mean? He, uh, he drove some of his linemen crazy, but, but I'll tell you what, if, if they were going to go see one guy, um, if they came back there and go see Randy, cause he was, he was just a beautiful, um, guy. He, he really had the heart of, of, uh, coach James and, and, and what he was trying to do with, with the, uh, with the players, um, Honestly, you know, people saw him bouncing around and all fired up on the sidelines and this and that during the game. But uh, what people don't know is he would he would also meet guys before class and, and help them with their you know with their homework. He'd tell them to meet me down here at the office at six o'clock and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna help you study for this test or whatever. And and that's the stuff behind the scenes that people don't see. And and that's what Randy Hart's all about. He's he's been around. I mean, he could write book after book. He's been around. He's been the, you know I asked him. Last year, I, I don't mean to embarrass him, but I asked him last year at Thunder Six Killers Golf Tournament, I said, how many Rose Bowl rings do you have? Because, you know, as a player and a coach and all that, he's got 10 Rose Bowl rings, brother. Wow. And, that, and, and, and that's a credit to to the, to to his uh, professionalism and, and, great, and the great job he does. But also, I, I would even say more to the – you know, to the kind of great coaches that want a guy like Randy Hart. You know, they, you know, they pick him for a reason. Don James picked him for a specific reason because he saw yeah. the things, you know, that were that, that were important to him. And um, you know, the integrity and taking care of guys, teaching them the, you know, teaching them what what, what really matters on the field and off the field. And um, that's you know, that's what Randy Hart's all about. I I honestly love the guy. I I think I might know the answer to this, <laughs> but I'll ask it anyway. Were you surprised at all to see uh, the dogs' defense kind of go down, and then Stanford's defense, you know, kick up when Coach Hart went down to Palo Alto? No, you know, it, it, there's, I, I I really, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, and and I, I don't, you know, blame it all on Hart leaving or anything, but but it's but it's definitely. Um, you know, we definitely had some issues for years, and I'll, and I'll be real honest. I was living back east for a lot of those years, and it was really hard. You know, when we get the Huskies on TV, it was really hard to even watch, um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was tough because of, uh, you know, we took a lot of pride, and uh, you know, we were the guys that used to that used to bitch at the coaches about getting pu- pulled out in the third quarter, you know, because we wanted to shut <laughs> guys out, and. Uh, and smashing chairs on the sidelines and stuff and acting like little babies, you know, because, uh, <laughs> cause that's what it came down to for us. And I would kind of realize later, I guess we're kind of whining a little bit. If they scored 10 or 12 points, I guess it's not the end of the world, but, uh, um, back then it was, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let, speaking of a time where, uh, you guys dominated coach Hart said that the, all I saw was all I saw was purple game was one of his favorite games to be a part of because it really showed uh, the game plan and preparation sort of all culminating and paying off. You were just a sophomore at the time, uh, but how well do you remember that game? Oh, I, I remember every uh, every bit of it. It was a nice hot day. I remember all the turf burns I got. That was probably I stung more after that game in the shower than any game I think back in the Husky <laughs> Stadium. You know, 
and that classic old uh, putt putt surf we used to have. But, the, but, I, but, but you know, it was, it was, it, you know, it really was. It really did all culminate there. We had had that defense going. Um, you know, oh, we made a change. Um, kind of later in the season the year before and uh people could probably tell it was starting to become an attacking style we had guys that could think read and and run and hit and it was it, it became um the coaches trusted us we trusted the coaches it was uh, a beautiful thing and um every week we used to say it was a party and uh, you know saturdays were our party we'd work hard all week and then saturday at 12:30 or 7:30, we got a party, and that was and that was how we did it, and it was it was unbelievable. And uh, we, uh, um, I always tell the story about when my daughter, uh, when she was about five years old, she saw some clip on TV about uh, our old guys, and she said, uh, she said, why do you guys tackle each other after you tackle the um, ball carrier, Dad? And, I, and, and, and you know, and, and I and I say, you know, I. I guess I never really realized that, but you know, we were jumping on each other and, and, uh, cause we were just so happy to be out there together. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Oh God. I love kids. That's too funny. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> great. What an, yeah, what nothing what an better in life, man. Nothing better in life. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. We have Husky legend, Dave, the hammer Hoffman. Uh, I'll go over his biography when we come back. Guy's done just about everything you can as a college football player and as a man, as a matter of fact, but you're listening to real dog radio. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to real dog radio. I'm Tyson Allenbaugh. My co-host is Mike Martin. We're also joined by real dog.com's publisher, Ruth Robbins, but I'm burying the lead here, guys. We're continuing our conversation with former Washington All-American and Secret Service member. Yeah, you heard that right. Secret Service member Dave Hoffman. Dave, uh, let's talk gamemanship. You got the nickname The Hammer for your relentless pounding, not a sledgehammer for one big knockout blow, but for uh, the Cougars. uh, Sorry, I I guess, how do I say, how do I put this? Cougar receivers have gotten alligator arms in the last two Apple Cups. You're a guy who used to lay the wood all the time. Talk about that mental war with where, you know, you're pounding and pounding on guys and how that affects the other team, whether it's receivers coming across the middle or maybe even a running back coming through the hole. No, you know, yeah, um, it, it really is the war of attrition and it, it, it's nasty. And um, for guys that like that kind of stuff, um, we're just blessed that football even exists. And, and I'll tell <laughs> you, the, um, the, the, um, the thing is, is, is it, is it really, um, it takes place. Yeah. You know what, when it's out in the open and you fillet somebody and, and that people get to enjoy it. And these days, you, you know, you probably, I'd, I'd have to watch it a little more cause you get a flag, um, here and there. But, um, mm-hmm. the, uh, it was something from the very first day, to be honest with you, eighth grade football in Texas, I went out for, and I just, I fell in love with it and realized I could let loose and be myself. And it was a great thing. But, um, no, and oftentimes I'll tell you, I always used to say, you know, a lot of the, the very biggest hits, um, the fans don't even notice because they're against a, a, a 320 pound lineman and you, um, and it's, and, and really, you know, you know, cause the game on defense is about, first of all, about stopping the run. And it's about kind of the, the guys in the box and the manhood and that, and that kind of stuff. And then obviously we, you know, we used to force them to have to throw. Um, there's no doubt about that. And then, course it opens up the blitz and we just have have fun doing that or faking it or whatever we're going to do but the um the the um you know the hitting aspect of the game was something that um uh you know you can teach the technique of it you can teach um you can teach the importance of it you can teach how to do it safely you can teach all those things but but to really do it um 100 percent effectively it, it's got to be something in your head that you want to do you know because it, it, it it's it's it, it's a full blown commitment, and it's something that you have to really enjoy. And um, so, uh, people, you, you know, like you know, you know, you know, everybody looks at somebody that that does something in the in the world and thinks, man, those guys are crazy. And so, uh, and I and I think some people may think that, and a lot of people appreciate it too. But I, um, it was something in the game that was extremely important, and and to establish. Um, Victory and dominance. There, there's no doubt. I mean, that is a that's a huge part of the game. And um, I remember when uh, um, I had met with another coach a few times. Um, the line coach back in the day had come down to San Jose to recruit me, and um, and then uh, Jim Lambright came with him one time, and uh, he and I were alone in the 
in the coach's room and the door was shut and he said, he, and he looked at me and he, he kind of put his um, hand on me and he said, Dave, I like you because you're nasty. And I said, <laughs> uh, and, and, and I said, that's the kind of guy I want to, I want to play for. That's the kind of guy I want to be with. Um, you know, somebody that appreciates that and, you know, maybe, maybe I want to throw it back or whatever, but that's, I mean, that's what I enjoyed the most about the game. And, um, and I think my, my teammates know I was always going to give it all. And I know they're going to give it all for me for sure. Absolutely. Love that answer. Love that answer. Uh, you know, over the years, the dogs have had some punishing defenses. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, in 1984, all one of their opponents had losses following a game against the Huskies. It's a good stat, Mike. Uh, in 1990, 1991, 1992, it was similar but unfortunately, the mid 2000s until about 2015, the dogs' defense seems soft. But the last couple of years against, uh, or at least under Coach Pete, most of Washington's opponents have followed up a game against Huskies with a loss, which to me is the measure of punishing. Yes, a physically punishing teams. And uh, bear with me here. But when Coach Pete came from Boise State, obviously Husky fans were excited about the offense. But were you as shocked as I was when the dogs sort of got back to that punishing defensive style that brought, you know, all those Pac-10 championships to Montlake? No, you know what? I um, I, I expected nothing um, less from from Coach Pete, to be honest with you. I, I had been following him closely for years, like a lot of us, and, and really appreciated the way he took care of business, the way he taught his guys, um, what he taught his, his guys and the schemes they played. Um you know, there was you know there was a very much a sense of, of being prepared and and uh, having plans for everything. And there was also um, there's also a fearlessness that though that I saw. You know, if you watch their offenses or the defenses, they would send guys um, when nobody was expecting that. You know, they would run a stunt or or or, or you know do something aggressive or get guys up to the line of scrimmage and come or fake it or whatever and the guy you know guys to do that um i'll I'll just tell you you have to be really confident in what you're doing you have to be really confident in the fact that you can read the lineman i mean when you're when you're six inches away from um five 315 pound guys that that want to kill you you (laughs) have to know what you're doing and 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 you got to be able to react quick and it's um and at the same time you're jacking with them Right and, and and you you know they don't know if you're coming or not and and that's that's really the kind of the art of um, you know knowing what you're doing and uh, the one thing about Coach Pete is he hires nothing but the very best assistant coaches and and so you know, the thing that I was excited about too is not only having Coach Pete but having the staff he was going to have because um, a guy like that I recruit guys that not only care about guys and the players and, and them getting their degree and all that kind of stuff. But he, they're going to teach them the, the, the very grounded, uh, you know, fundamentals and also the latest and greatest stuff and um, techniques and all that kind of stuff. And he's always trying to get better. Um, that's, a, that's one thing I appreciate about Coach Pete and his staff is they're never totally satisfied. You know, they're thankful for things. And, and appreciative of what they have and that, but they're never really satisfied, and they're always and they're always digging for more. And that's something that's really hard to do year after year. Um, and you know, he's uh, he's taken us back to where I think the Huskies should be, a place like that with the uh, tradition that Don James started. Um, I really feel, at least at least um, in my era, and I um, I really feel like um, he's he's the guy with the integrity. And the uh, um, and the composure to lead the guys. Nice. I, I I could not agree more. Could not agree more. Let's go back again to your playing days. Your teammate Steve Atman. You had one of the best views of him destroying appoint, uh, opponents every single weekend. Did you ever stop at any point and watch a play and just appreciate what he was doing? You know what? I never, I never really had time except on on film. And um, you know, it, it's you know, it's one of those things when you're when you're around somebody every day, you almost don't know how great they are. You know right. what I mean? And I knew he was it was freaking awesome, and I wouldn't want anybody else in the world in front of me. And but I but I was I was with him since the first second he got on there um, on campus, and uh, we were two rockheads running around together and. Um, we were just, we, we, all we had was dreams and, and work ethic back then. You know what I mean? That's all, that's really all we had. And, 
and I watched him um, grow into uh, just an unstoppable force. And uh, I tell you, I was honored to uh, to uh, play behind him, and I and I got his back um, for the rest of his life, man. That's just how it is with the with our old uh, crew, and it's um, it's an honor to. Uh, to have uh, played with him and all the guys, um, I could go down the, the roster, but but uh, but the guys know how I feel about them. And uh, and the great thing about um, a guy like Edmund is that we stay in, in close touch and get together when we can. And um, he's got an awesome family, and he loves my family. And um, you know, during all the different seasons of life, um, mm-hmm. the, you know that, but they all mean probably a little bit more because of what we did back in the day. I guarantee you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I love, I love it, Dave. That you're, you're, I love this interview. This has been amazing, man. Uh, we got a few more questions, Thanks, and then, and then we'll let you go. Uh, and this is sort of a, a, a two part, a two parter question. Uh, how was it? How did practicing against your offense and ha- being practicing on that side field on the lake prepare you for you know those 1990, 1991, and 1992 seasons? How, how brutal was that? Or it was maybe it wasn't brutal. I'm sorry. Say that again. Practicing against our uh, offense or what? Yeah. Well, I guess both. I guess how is practice uh, an offense as talented as the Huskies were back then, and then combine yeah. that combine that with uh, that that uh, you know the two a days, the fall and spring and all that. You know, just yeah. how did that prepare you for you know those those championship seasons? You know, I, I, I'll tell you what the um, you know the tempo that we practiced at down on our end of the field was uh, on the defensive end was, was unbelievable. And the contact and everything else, you know, how, you know, how I guess they talk about savings guys um, sometimes now being a little, uh, being a little broken down, you know, before, they, you know, you know, when they're done, <laughs> that was, uh, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. That's a little bit, uh, or, or more so how it was um, with <laughs> us. And, 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 and uh, we actually had some scouts come around and tell us, boy, we haven't seen this in you know a long time. But 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 you know what? I mean, that's all we knew, and we and and that's what made us what we were. And um, so when we went down and and played eleven on eleven against the offense, or seven on seven, or or inside run drill, we we um, I, I I I I hate to tell you, but I I used to I used to try to smash the hell out of them, and it was <laughs> just, just because it was uh, and you know they were my brothers, you know, but um that's what you do to brothers sometimes. Right. But then you yeah. all walk off the field, you know, but then you walk off the field arm in arm. Um, cause you, cause that's what brothers do, you know, cause it's all about, uh, it's all about caring and loving each other. But, uh, but sometimes you got to teach them a lesson and, uh, and, and that's, and, and that's, and, you know, and honestly, that's kind of, that's kind of what we did. But, um, and I, I remember, I think I was a sophomore, I may, you know, maybe it was a sophomore year going to junior season. I, I forget, but, um, Coach James used to have the twos go against the ones, but one time he had the ones go against the ones, um, and 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 so I remember um, a Saturday scrimmage, and Coach James made the um, he um, practice was over, and he he blew the whistle. He told the offense, "You're going to stay out here and keep practicing because this is because I mean they're just you know beating 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 the ass out of you," and and it was. <laughs> And, and that's the way it was, but it was, um, you know what? It, 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 I mean, I don't know how you'd stop that deep, to be honest with you. And and it was, you know, there were so many great players over there on offense and everything, but it was just, how are you going to stop a Don Jones and a Steve Atman and a mm-hmm. Tyrone Rogers and uh, Chico Fraley, Jaime Fields, you know, Paul, I mean, come on. And it was, um, and it, but, but I'll tell you what, you know, all the one-on-one drills, um, with those guys is what made us is is what really made us great. You know, what I mean that's that's what um, the uh, the offensive linemen. I mean, having to beat um, you know those guys across the line. Um, you know, Saturdays I want to say felt easy because it's never easy, but it was. Um, but it but it really taught us a lot. Yeah, absolutely. All I right. mean, uh, you know, the offense was you know was so loaded. You know, I mean, you look at Mario Bailey and and our mm-hmm. running backs, Nip and and Bino and those guys. And I mean, I mean, golly, they I mean they were loaded and they could do it all day. And so um, it was. Um, I think after that, after that, after that practice, though, the offense really uh, really turned it around and 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 realized. I think Gilby had just gotten there, so there was still some. So there's still some learning curve, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, bringing you know bringing him in for the offense really opened up. I remember, I remember that that 
you know, you know, putting the one back in there and the cut back and the zone blocking. Uh, they really, um, the guys really, you know, started to work at it and be aggressive and nasty themselves. And, you know, they had the mentality and they had the mindset for that. I think they just needed to be confident in what they were doing. Yeah, well, I can imagine facing a physical demons like you. I'm sure, you know, t- facing Nebraska probably was a little bit easier, maybe than they had imagined. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's. Uh, I, I, can you talk about how you feel uh, that how Jake Browning and company going against the Husky defense last year actually helped prepare them for the run that they went on? No, you know, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, I totally. Uh, I totally see that, and I and I and I and I think that's the you know I think that's the stuff of um, I, and I think that's what really um, helps uh, it, it, it you know it's the day in and day out um, uh, work grinding and and the and the uh, just striving for the little things you know because once you get uh, once you make the big jump it's it's always hard to uh, to keep improving and you have to keep improving so you. So what you do is you find one or two little things every week to work on and focus on. Of course, you do other things, but there's there's a couple things you're really focused on. At least that's how I looked at it. And the and, and I think a lot of guys do that. A lot of guys I've talked to do that. And it's and it's um I think that's what they what the the kind of mentality that they had. And they realized that the, you know working against a, an awesome player every day makes you get better. You know it's like uh, when my brother and I were younger, we used to go play hoop. You know, across town, and it was like, you know, you know, for one, we loved it. We loved the guys, and two, it was, it was, it, I mean, it got us better. And it was, um, it, that's just kind of the the way uh, you know, have it. I mean, what a blessing to have a great defense right there on the field with you. If you're mm-hmm. an offense or a quarterback, and I mean, and then trying to throw against those DBs you got there. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> you know, I mean. I mean that's just outstanding with the pass rush like that and uh, and um very and then being disciplined and the thing I like about the Huskies and of course you know this from a coach Pete team but they're not going to they're not going to have the mental breakdowns in right, the right. uh in the mistakes you know leaving a guy wide open um jumping on you know biting on some on some BS fake you know uh and his own coverage you know you know some linebacker biting on something you got to be reading the lineman and and, the, and that's just I mean these guys know what they're doing, and that's the thing I appreciate. Everybody out there is, you know, knows their job, and not only knows their job, probably knows everybody's job. You know, yeah. <laughs> when we used to get, you know, you know, we used to get tested on uh, Friday nights at the hotel, and they used to give us a test, and we had to, as, line, as as inside linebackers, we had to know what everybody was doing on every play, and so you know, whatever the formation was, whatever, whatever the the. Um, whatever the coverage and the scheme or the blitz was or whatever, mm-hmm. we had to draw it up and we had to know what everybody was doing. And if, and if the left cornerback was off um, on Sunday, I got a minus for it. You know what I mean? Ooh. So it was like, it was, um, and honestly, I couldn't even see the guy usually out there. Well, <laughs> it was, I, that, that's out of my peripheral vision, man. But you know what, but it, you know what, but it just taught you, you know what I mean? It just made you think about it. And it was, mm-hmm. uh, and that's kind of what it was all about. So just knowing everything, especially from the, the inside spot there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I have, uh, just like I said, a couple more questions for you. Uh, a segment we did earlier uh, on tonight's show was we all picked a breakout player for the Husky defense this coming season. Have you given that any thought? You know what? I really haven't picked one guy out yet. Um, the, um, the, you know, you know, there's some obvious prospects out there and, and I, uh, but I, I really, um, I'm really just waiting to see, you know, and, and, and I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be diplomatic here or anything mm-hmm. like that, but I just, but I just, uh, I, I, I definitely expect big things from them. I think, uh, like every great team, um, there's guys waiting in the wings to, to burst onto the scene that, that, that were maybe, um, almost as good as the guy in front of them, um, or, or what have you. And I think, uh, in, in with the, uh, with the whole off season, it's amazing how how much you can improve in an off season. If, if you if there's something new you learn and and uh, you know you're working hard, it's amazing how um, you know from one one January to the next September how much you can improve. And it's, right. um, and I and I really expect the guys that were even starters last year are going to improve that much more, and the guys that were just really chomping at the bit. Um, I, I, my mind, I, I'm actually thinking of so many guys right now, but it's, but I, just, <laughs> I, but you know, but I, but I think that they 
are all you know have that attitude because that's the way that's the way Coach Pete does things, and that's the and that's the Husky attitude. Yeah, that, and that's refreshing. Coming from a, a uh, to be honest, Dave, I'm 28 years old, so uh, a good portion of my life, Husky football hasn't exactly been the best thing to watch. So to see it kind of <laughs> to kind of come back to you know back in you know the the glory days uh, where you didn't have to worry about you know who was stepping up, you knew with the infrastructure and the type of team and coaches they had, you didn't have to really think about it too much. Um, but is that's that, that's it for football stuff I, I, on a personal level. Uh, are you, I, I think you said you're still in the Secret Service, but what else are you up to? Where are you living? What else are you doing? Anything, uh, any hobbies? Uh, you just f- fill the Husky fans in on Dave Hoffman. Yeah, well, you know, so I'm down here with my beautiful wife and two kids in, in uh, Ventura County and uh, um, enjoying this. I've got a couple years left, like I said, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll be back up to Seattle if, if something opens up up there, but um, I'm just I'm just kind of enjoying myself my uh Daughters in college, and my and my boys. Uh, my boys a sophomore. He's a 2019 guy. He's he's actually uh, he's better than I was. Um, Ooh. And, um, yeah, he's six three, um, almost 200, dunking the two hands. He's a, he's a nasty linebacker. He, he could play safety. He's fast enough, but I, but I but he's been um, he's he's he was um, I was able to coach him when, when he was a freshman, and that and that was a lot of fun. It was and mm-hmm. uh, and him and his buddies, and then. The, uh, um, the, you know, the job's been great, met a lot of great people. And the, uh, we moved out here from Washington, D.C. area in 2011. And, uh, like I said, everybody's just been, been great out in this area. And, uh, I do get to see some, you know, some old, uh, you know, Shane Palco and some of the guys down this way, um, from time to time, uh, we get together and hang out and uh, have a cold one or something. But um, <laughs> and uh, and and of course, I try to get up there to Seattle whenever I can. Up to Husky Land, it really feels like home, to be honest with you. And uh, um, it's uh, it'll you know it it'll always be the apple of my eye, no doubt about it. All right. Well, hey, I, I was going to say you might have a book, by the way. A, a, your life could be a book. I don't know if you've ever given that any thought. Uh, all, 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 you know, all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You ever thought about it? No, I, no, you know what? So you know, yeah. So Derek Johnson and uh, uh, and I, he he uh, called me up. Uh, he's an author that's that, that's done quite a number of uh, of uh, Husky books, and uh, we did one uh, here a few years ago, and it was a real pleasure to. Uh, it brought up a lot of great memories. Um, he was the author, but I was on the phone with him uh, quite a few times, just going over the old days, and it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun to bring all those all those things back up, and even from my childhood, you know, and what kind of got me, what what kind of runs my motor a little bit, and uh, it was just a, a real pleasure to uh, yap with with Derek. He's a real good guy, and it was uh, it was fun to yap with him about it all. Awesome. Well, we we could talk probably talk uh, for another two hours. I gotta go. I know you have to go as well. Get back to your family. But thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on Real Dog Radio. Uh, it's Dave Hoffman, everybody, a true Husky legend. That will do it for us. Again, we'd like to thank former Husky All-American linebacker Dave, and Secret Service member, everyone, yes, uh, Dave Hoffman, for joining us tonight. For RealDog.com's publisher, Ruth Robbins, our executive producer and co-host, Mike Martin, and our studio engineer, Ken Norris, I'm Tyson Allenbaugh. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next week for more recruiting and off-season analysis. Until then, be sure to check out realdog.com for recruiting updates. Go dogs! Go dogs!